Uh, good morning and welcome to the Salt Lake City and County Building. As mayor of the capital city, I am honored to welcome each of you here to kick off the 11th annual Idol Free Month. Salt Lake City was one of the first cities in Utah to sign the Idol Free Declaration and to pass an anti-idling ordinance to help our residents be a part of the clear, clear the air solution. Salt Lake City is working like never before to create solutions to clear the air. In the last two and a half years alone, the city has created the first transit master plan, affordable housing plan, and of course, our climate positive energy plan, which will have Salt Lake City powered by 100% renewable energy by 2032. Since the creation of that plan, three other communities in Utah have adopted it. And with the support of residents, we have been able to fast forward these plans through new sales tax revenues and partnerships with community and business entities, including Rocky Manpower, which is helping us reach our 2032 goal. The goal of each of these plans is simple to help residents in Salt Lake City and those who work here to get out of their cars and be a part of the clean air solution. With everything we do, we strive to set the example for other governmental entities and Utah and to find replicable solutions to the common problems we share, our dirty air. It is great to have 71 mayors and the governor on board with Idle Free Month this year. This is truly a historic showing of support and I want to commend Tammy Cooper and the Utah Clean Cities for making this a reality. And now we look to the vehicle owners to take our simple message, turn your key and be idle free. It is important that you take that message as a call to action. We hope you will join us in our effort to limit idling in our local communities. I just returned from the Global Climate Action Summit in San Francisco, and one of the key takeaways was that each of us must take a personal level of responsibility to address the impacts of climate change and help clear our air. Cities around the country are standing up and acting, pledging to reduce dependence on dirty fuels and moving to a clean energy future, including electric vehicles and charging stations powered by renewable energy. Idle Free Month is a great time to get in the habit of avoiding idling and maybe even skipping a few trips in your car. Thank you again for coming to Salt Lake City to kick off this year's efforts. You'll have to please excuse me, I have another event across the street to talk about what we are doing with clearing the air in our buildings and the construction of buildings at the Net Zero Summit. Thank you again for coming today. Thank you, Mayor Piskupski. Again, we're so grateful to be here at the Salt Lake City, City and County Building and be sharing this day with the capital city and other cities from around the state of Utah. Next, we have Dr. Laura Nelson. She's the energy advisor for the Governor's Office of Energy Development. And it is the governor who signs this declaration, which is the 11th declaration that we have put together. And we're so excited this year. Again, this is, um, such a, a historic moment. And so, Dr. Laura Nelson. Um, Tammy, thank you so much uh, for your introduction. You know, I always love being with you and uh, with the group that comes together to talk about uh, the great things that we're doing in Utah to address um, our 
smart growth, uh, as I like to call it. We are a booming economy. Uh, we're a very resilient economy. We've come back from um, some challenges and we've had tremendous success in doing so. Uh, but as we grow, we need to be smart about it. Uh, that's what I always like to say. Uh, and as the mayor mentioned, she's about to go head over to uh, the library to talk about other smart growth strategies as they relate to our buildings. And I think it's such a, a great uh, event that we are here talking about transportation there across the street uh, talking about buildings because that's what it's going to mean for uh, creating the high quality of life in the future uh, that we all enjoy today and continuing to elevate uh, Utah's economy. Uh, as Tammy mentioned I'm Laura Nelson and I have the great honor and privilege of serving in two roles in the state. I serve as uh, Governor Herbert's energy advisor uh, and I also serve as the executive director of his office of energy development development and here how's that is that better okay so hopefully you can all hear me better now um, and for several years now um, and prior to even my joining Governor Herbert's staff four years ago we've had a, the incredible opportunity uh, to partner at the state and local level uh, with governments with education institutions with communities uh, all brought together by Utah Clean Cities uh, to highlight and I think chime together, turn your key, be idle free. Uh, so celebrating that event here today because this is what it's about, changing our behavior, changing the decisions we make, whether it's in our buildings or in our transportation choices, we can each be part of contributing uh, to the solution of better communities and a better quality of life along the Wasatch Front and really throughout Utah. So as we grow, um, I think it's it's incredible uh, to see the growth that we're experiencing today. Low unemployment, buildings going up, uh, over 800,000 people really I think in about a decade here. And it's fun to see that diversity in our population, uh, in our buildings occur, but with that, comes challenges and we want to address those in a meaningful way. So this past year in May, uh, Governor Herbert released his energy action plan, building from his 10 year strategic plan and also his energy efficiency and conservation plan. And he specified a specific goal in partnership with his energy advisory council and other stakeholders specifically related to the transportation sector. So it's about the choices we make and how we get from place to place, turning off our car and not idling, but it's also about looking at how we innovate across our transportation sector, whether we're looking at school buses, so bringing in clean burning natural gas or electric uh, school buses, as we look at large uh, equipment systems, how can we provide more electric uh, services within those spaces and really continue uh, to diversify the transportation fuel mix uh, in the state. Utah Clean Cities, of course, has been at the helm of helping lead us in educating the public about those decisions that we can make in terms of diversifying our fuel mix and also making choices about how we use uh, our automobiles to get from place to place, combining those errands, as the mayor said, being idle free, carpooling, traveling at times uh, where we don't see high density on our highways and our roadways. Those are all things that we can do. And by working together and setting an example, we make our roads friendlier, we make our communities friendlier, and we make our air cleaner. And this is really how we come together through growth and partnership to realize a high quality of life for all of you for your children and for many generations to come. So with that, it's a great honor and privilege for me uh, to read uh, the governor's idle free uh, declaration. And I think that's my main task today. Um, I, I know the governor is always excited to celebrate uh, this event each year. So thank you, Tammy. Uh, thank you, Royal. It's good to have you here uh, to all of you who are participating in this event today. And here is the governor's declaration for Idle Free Utah 2018. Whereas Utah had the first Idle Free campaign in the nation in 2007, whereas 2018 marks the 11th year of the Idle Free in Utah Governor's Declaration and has become known as Utah's own movement of Turn Your Key, Be Idle Free. 
Whereas Utah chooses to protect blue sky, breathe easier, and be idle free. Whereas idling vehicles emit particulate matter and other pollutants that when inhaled are known to cause serious health problems, especially for children and sensitive populations. Whereas the governor of the state of Utah and his office of energy development seeks to educate and promote workplace charging and idle free as key goals of Utah's energy action plan. Whereas the Utah Clean Cities, along with all Utah school districts and the Utah State Board of Education developed and put into place a school bus idling reduction program, an elementary student education plan, informing youth and communities about the benefits of reducing idling. Whereas the Utah State Board of Education trains over 3,000 bus drivers annually on idle free bus operations and driver training. Whereas public and private fleets have supported the efforts of idle free to the benefit of our communities by encouraging driver training and idle free fleets and using clean advanced fuels. Whereas the grassroots idle free education program developed by Utah Clean Cities has grown with the Ford momentum of Utah Clean Air Partnership, Breathe Utah, Utah Society of Environmental Education, and the State Health Department's Utah Asthma Program and Recess Guidance, and has reached over 15,000 students across 450 schools. Whereas these efforts have resulted in four prominent school districts, including Salt Lake City, Park City, granite and canyons to be fully committed to 100% idle free campuses with extraordinary dedication to drop off and pick up zones where children are most vulnerable. Whereas eight Utah cities have been declared idle free, including Park City, Salt Lake City, Alta, Holiday, Logan, Cottonwood Heights, Murray and Sandy, with all having idle free ordinances. Whereas more than 70 Utah mayors representing their respective cities and more than 75% of the entire state population are applauded for their support of this very important endeavor. Now, therefore, I, Governor Gary R. Herbert, Governor of the State of Utah, do hereby declare the month of September 2018 and the 2018-2019 winter season to be idle free. So Tammy, I know has uh, something she wants to I do see. here, Stay but there. can I do one more thing? I, I want to say again, thanks to all of you, to the mayors, uh, to the school districts, um, to our legislature, to Patrice Aaron, my good friend, uh, who has been a pioneer really in the legislature. It is about the conversations that you have today. It's about the ones that you have tomorrow uh, that make the difference and the evidence is here today. And thank you, Tammy, for bringing us together for this today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. I would like this, the eight city representatives, the mayors, the city council people to come forward so we can give you your um, official declaration from the governors, the 11th declaration for Idle Free Month and Idle Free Utah season. And we would like to get a quick photo. Thank you, everyone come up. Again, thank you, Dr. Nelson. I can't imagine doing an Idle Free without Dr. Nelson's presence. Um, she's incredible. And I appreciate all of her dedication and work. And again, um, we have many other people to speak today, so let's get with um, going forward. Um, next, we have Utah's Clean Air Partnership. We have Tom Carter here. UCARE, as we lovingly call it in Utah, has been a fantastic partner with Utah Clean Cities and many other clean advocates in the state. And we are so grateful to their support. Without their support and um, really just their overwhelming support for the Idle Free campaign, I'm not sure we would be where we are today. Uh, a lot of funding came through them to provide signs for the schools, the Idle Free stickers. So um, please give a round of applause for the UCARE um, partnership and also Tom Carter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy, and thanks to Utah Clean Cities for all the hard work they do 
really spearheading this and leading the way as it comes, as it relates to being idle free. As we like to say in our efforts, mm -mm, I've never been told I'm being too quiet. Here we go, let's try it again. As we like to say in our efforts to clear the air, there are no perfect answers, but there are practical solutions. And being idle free is one of those practical solutions. Let me give you some science. Two minutes of idling is the equivalent of one mile of gasoline. That's a lot. Additionally, five minutes of idling is the equivalent of four times more VOCs, three times more NOx, and 10 times more carbon dioxide than if you restarted your warm car. When the lid goes on, we need to decrease the amount of emissions from our cars. And by keeping our cars off, by not idling, we are making a significant effort, a practical solution as we fight our inversion season. We are grateful to the governor and to Dr. Nelson for their leadership. This is a big deal. We applaud Mayor Biskupski and the 70 other mayors who have signed on. Additionally, those four school districts and eight cities who have passed idle free ordinances. They are leading the way and showing us how to do these things. We challenge all the other cities and towns and school districts to join with us, to join this cause, to show their people whom they have jurisdiction over that this is a practical solution. And finally, we challenge organizations, businesses, and families to identify their own clean air practical solutions. Whether it's to walk or ride their bikes, to ride transit, whether it's a carpool or trip chain, to eliminate and reduce their cold starts, and of course, to eliminate idling. There are things they can do today that will affect our air today. Come up with solutions, something. And we promise you, we know, that we will make a big difference together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Next, we have Utah Bipartisan Clean Air Caucus, and we have Representative Patrice Arendt, who's going to speak about some of the work that she's done. I don't think we can talk about clean air and legislation in Utah without um, recognizing Representative Arendt. She's a fantastic and amazing leadership force to, to be reckoned with, and we so appreciate her being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone who's, who's here today. There are so many people here today who've been working on clean air for a very, very long time and have served as my teachers to help me understand some of the technical parts of these issues. Uh, I want to acknowledge the other co-chairs of our Clean Air Caucus. Representative Lowry Snow is hoping to be here today, was not able to be here, but also Representatives uh, Chavez Hauk, Red, Briscoe, Edwards, and Senators Weiler and Escambia. They are all our co-chairs of our bipartisan Clean Air Caucus. Since our caucus began just a few years ago, we have passed, with your help, more clean air legislation than in the history of our state. That being said, we know there is still a lot more work to do, and we are continuing to work hard on these issues. Our caucus is continuing to meet all year round. Education has always been a very important part of what we are focusing on. And this whole effort in terms of anti-idling, that's what it's about. It's about education and teaching the public why they shouldn't idle and why it's not good for their health and why it's not even good for their pocketbook and why it's not good for their car. We want to make idling as socially unacceptable as throwing litter outside your car window. If you do that, can you imagine what your kids are going to say to you from the back seat? Mom, Dad, what are you doing? And I want you to know that the kids have been very helpful. I started, a, before we had these contests going, I started a, a contest for anti-idling posters. And I look and see how they've developed. And I look at this one up there. My mom idles less than your mom. I love that. Isn't that great? And I look at the, one of the schools in my district that passed the first resolution, Morningside Elementary, on this issue. And I think about Upland Terrace and a little boy who had a poster. And on the poster, it would say, today is, and it, would, would, it was a red air day, it would be a red air day, yellow air day. And he would go out there as cars were picking up their kids. The parents were picking up their kids, and the cars were out. And if the car was idling, he would po point to the poster, he would point to the car. 
And believe me, that was very effective in getting people not to idle. So it's very important to have students involved. And I can't thank the mayors and the city council members and others and the governor who have been so involved in this effort. Because this is one where we need to teach people. Education is the key. And I just thank all of you for working on this. I thank all of you for helping us at the Clean Air Caucus. And again, this is a bipartisan effort. The air we breathe is not Republican air, it's not Democratic air, it's everyone's air, and we need to make an effort to make sure it's as clean as possible. Thank you so very much for being here. I also wanted to um, mention um, H um, House Concurrent Resolution 18 and the smog ratings, which 47 legislators signed. It was, a, it was a huge number, and it was a bipartisan effort for people to look at to encourage Utahns to buy clean emission vehicles. And we owe a lot to Representative Arendt for that, so thank you. Next, we have Intermountain Healthcare Center and Steve Bergstrom. Um, Steve's here to talk to you today about what businesses do and what um, empl em employers can do to encourage uh, taking alternative transportation, doing idle free, and I'll let him speak a little bit about his program. Thank you, Steve, for being here. Uh, as Tammy already mentioned, uh, I'm with Intermountain Healthcare. Uh, we're a fairly large business in the state. We cover the entire state. And air quality is a really important thing to us. Uh, we see the effects of that every day. Uh, uh, we, we treat the patients, we treat the results of all the air pollution, the emissions. And so it becomes very personal to us. We just as soon not have people uh, that we're treating for some of the things that we're having to, to treat them for. Uh, the big why, uh, as a business, uh, one of the key uh, reasons that matters to us is that it actually it's costly. So if we have people idling uh, our vehicles, by the way, we have about 750 uh, fleet vehicles, uh, pool cars that we operate and uh, put about 1, uh, 12 million miles annually on those vehicles. Uh, so you can see we have a fairly large footprint there. And if we have people idling, uh, that's costing us a lot of money. Uh, idling equals zero miles per gallon, so, uh, and, and a lot of pollution. So that's important to us. The second is all that air is, uh, that our patients are breathing when we drop them off and pick them up at our hospitals is very unhealthy. They're already in a compromised position, and we, uh, we don't want them being compromised further, just coming out of an operation or just coming in with a, with a health uh, uh, situation. And so we've actually uh, eliminated uh, idling. We haven't eliminated, we're, we're trying to get people to eliminate that from their uh, behaviors uh, in our pick up and drop off places for our patients at our, our facilities. Uh, all of our docks are idle free, so all trucks must shut down. And uh, our, all our campuses are, are, are the same way. The third is that uh, that footprint that I just mentioned a moment ago with our large fleet is affecting our, our communities and we, don't, we already have a fairly large footprint. Healthcare is very dirty business. We create a lot of uh, ugly things and emissions is one of those that we can control and we don't need to, to uh, uh, keep putting that back onto our communities and so it's really important to us. Some of the things we've done is we've put monitors on all those uh, uh, vehicles and so they're monitoring the uh, good and bad behaviors of all of our drivers, uh, the seat belts, uh, speeding, hard stops, hard turns, all those types of things. But it also monitors uh, the uh, idling. Uh, with our home care, and that's the only one I was able to get to uh, last minute, uh, but our home care has gone from 120 hours per month of idling down to 45 uh, hours per month of idling. We'd like to have that at zero, but we still have to, we're carrying specimens and pharmaceuticals and that type of stuff that still requires us to maintain uh, integrity of the temperature within the, the vehicle. So, uh, but we're looking at solutions for that. We also have uh, no idling uh, posted on all our campuses now. Even, you'll actually start to see it at all, all, all of our uh, uh, clinics throughout the, the, the state as well. Uh, we actually have a fairly large goal. Uh, by 2025, we want to replace 80% of our fleet, that's 750 vehicles I mentioned. By the way, every year, we're, we're gaining about 8% every year on vehicles, so uh, it keeps growing. 
uh, but we want to have 80% uh, of that fleet actually converted to electric or uh, hybrid uh, vehicles by 2025. Uh, we actually think we may be able to do that by 2020, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, I already mentioned the monitoring. Uh, we actually, uh, with those drivers, as we get the data back, we actually meet with those drivers and we do some coaching and some counseling, uh, some education, so they understand the impact and what they could do different to, to actually eliminate some of that uh, uh, idling. Uh, we are in, uh, putting uh, environmental stations at all of our emergency room departments. Uh, we'll, we'll actually start doing that uh, beginning next year. Uh, that's so that all of our emergency vehicles and our police, uh, as they come to the emergency rooms, will be able to plug into those environmental stations and uh, turn their vehicles off, uh, hopefully. We also are putting active, actively uh, across our entire system uh, EV charging systems. Uh, again, uh, that's to support our fleet, but also the population as uh, they convert to uh, electric vehicles. As Tom already mentioned and a few others, uh, we actually have some goals around active transportation. So we're really trying, again, as a healthcare company, we want people to get out of their cars. So we're really trying to promote active transportation uh, with uh, uh, walking. In fact, we have a, a contest going on right now where we're walking the entire uh, length of the state and uh, uh, visiting every one of our hospitals as an activity. So uh, we're not really, really not walking there, but we're getting all the steps into that. So that's, that's kind of a fun way to make that happen. Uh, we're also encouraging all of our uh, staff to actually use WebEx, Skype, and uh, what's called telepresence uh, for our meetings so that we're actually reducing all of our meetings and we're actually tracking that. But that'll be an extreme goal starting, uh, well, we've already started it, but uh, we'll have a major uh, presence of that uh, in 2019, and hopefully eventually we'll eliminate uh, the, mo the movement back and forth. Uh, we have about 39,000 uh, employees, so you can imagine all the meetings that go on and people getting their cars and traveling uh, back and forth. So that's, that's another one we hope to, to uh, get rid of. So uh, that's pretty much it, Tammy, wherever Tammy went. There she is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Your, the work that you're doing makes such a difference in our community, and we appreciate you. Um, next, we have the Utah High School Idle Free Art Posters and Dr. Rosalind Brain from Utah State University. This is a wonderful program. I'll let her tell you a little bit about it. Um, this is some of their artwork that was pointed out earlier, and it's been a really fun uh, community-based grassroots initiative that involves students, it involves art, and it involves communication and messaging. So um, with that, Dr. Brain. Thank you, Tammy. It's been a pleasure working with you as well and various programs around the state. So learning to drive is an exciting time for teens and a terrifying time for parents. However, it's also the perfect time to intercept and enact good driving practices and encourage alternative modes of transit for cleaner air. My name is Rosalind Brain McCann and I'm a professor at Utah State University in Sustainable Communities. My colleague, Dr. Edwin Stafford in the Huntsman School of Business and I sought out to do just that to in informing the, or forming the Utah High School Clean Air Poster Contest in 2015. So the contest has a few major goals. The first is to engage high school teens learning to drive about local air pollution, the pollution problems associated with their new driving privilege, and driving behaviors that can lessen their personal impact, including refraining from idling, carpooling, tri trip chaining, taking the bus, walking, and biking. The second major goal is to create educational outreach high school clean air poster posters using marketing communication techniques learned. Uh, it, it was really exciting the first time I presented to high school students. I was a little terrified. It's been a while since I've worked with high schoolers and uh, they're a different crowd, but they are a talented crowd as you can see by some of their poster examples. And uh, we had a representative Arendt reference the my mom idols less than your mom competitive type theme of a poster. That was from our first year of the poster contest in 2015. So I just want to read you a couple impacts from the most recent year, our 2018 poster contest. The contest, the posters all come in around January and we have uh, selected um, uh, influential individuals serve on the voting committee for the top winners. So in 2018, we had over 550 students. These are high school students from art, business, and environmental science classes involved. There were 23 presentations that my colleague Ed and I delivered to the high school level. 
and we had 36 finalist posters come in and that the finalist posters are first voted within each high school and then they go to the statewide level for the final final vote and we had nine top winners this year all posters came from Cache and Grand Counties and we are looking to expand out to other counties as the poster contest continues to grow every year. So the entries are often funny, edgy, terrifying and reflective of team pop culture. We have some up there on display but I just want to show you a couple more to, to give you an example of team pop culture and a couple terrifying posters that have come in. So this one is a play off of Stranger Things. This says don't let our world turn into the it, turn pollution things into the upside down. I've never seen Stranger Things and have no idea what this is, but in high school it's very popular. Here we have a funny poster that says it's not too late to care about the air. And on the gravestones here on the gray side, we have last words I should have carpooled. I I guess it, the horror movie came out in the last couple years again, so this is a uh, play off of that. We have Clean Air down here, Don't Idle, a terrifying poster. And the most terrifying, I would say, of all that came in this year is this one, Air Pollution Causes Birth Defects, and we have a three-eyed devil baby from Air Pollution. High schoolers can get pretty creative. At the bottom it says, studies show that the air pollution caused by idling is tied to birth defects. So very talented and a vast array of entries come in from the high school level. So we, each year we conduct an impact evaluation from the posters, poster contest. And this year we had 124 responses. And I'll just share with you a few of those highlights. What's the impact of students working on this, learning about our air pollution in the state, and then working to enact effective messaging to get others to engage in alternative modes of transit, or at least not idle. And so student scores on all of a life skills assessment uh, on every single item were significantly improved as a result of taking part in the contest. So 100 students, 83% said the contest positively impacted them. 70 students, 58% experienced personal behavior change as a result of the contest. And the last stat I'll share with you, I'm a pro professor, I have to share a couple stats. 81, 71% of students, um, 81 individuals, or of parents, I apologize, we also surveyed parents, reported that their teens conversed with them about air pollution and that's a really important fact. We're learning that the teens are going home and sharing their ideas with their parents and also sharing what they learned about air pollution. And just a few impact quotes from parents. He made me realize how much I let my car idle and I'll try to work on that. He explained to me that it really hurts our air, especially because of the way our valley is shaped and the inversions we get every year. They wanted me to stop idling my car. They brought a strong argument. They had good evidence that helped me understand. And here we have a couple more from other parents. I'm grateful when he shares with me what he's learned. I care about what my children are doing and feel very motivated to change. And lastly, one parent voiced gratitude over his or her teens, um, expressed appreciation for our efforts to engage in cleaner actions, expressing my child is amazing. So I just want to say it's so important that we are educating teens, but also we are walking the talk and enacting cleaner air. Uh, I live down in Moab. I'm a professor from the regional campus there, and I live in a walking, biking only community called Mul Mulberry Grove. And I bike to work every day, and I think it's very important to model these behaviors if we want others to engage in them as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosalind. And I just want to let you know that all of those posters will be on the Utah Clean Cities website. I'm Debbie Lyons and I have the privilege of serving on the Utah Clean Cities Board and I also work for Salt Lake City Sustainability. I want to thank Tammy Cooper for putting this amazing event together and thank all of you for coming out to support Utah Clean Cities and Idle Free Utah. On behalf of Salt Lake City, I just want to thank everyone um, who have been our uh, partners and supporters and also the leaders uh, in Idle Free and cleaning up our air. Especially, I want to thank uh, Breathe Utah, uh, Wasatch Clean Air Network, and Utah Society for Environmental Education. These are amazing nonprofit organizations that are doing a lot of work on nonprofit budgets. So, I just want to thank you for your work as well. And I, I wish you a, a very uh, clean air day and a good afternoon. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>